Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this afternoon we're going to have a look at the latest from the various computer models for the potential of some quite heavy rain and some severe thunderstorms we're going to be seeing over the course of this evening in and into Saturday where the main thunderstorm risk really is behind the initial weather front. We'll also have a look at the longer term outlook as it is looking very dry um, from around Sunday, Monday onwards throughout the next working week. It is looking fairly dry, not amazingly hot but generally still warm and dry, so a lot of people will still enjoy the weather. So do remember if you enjoy the video, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we first have a look at the WRF run for the Cape charts. So we do have some Cape around tomorrow, not massive, but some that will sufficiently fuel these storms. Now, there has been a yellow warning put in force for these storms, and I'll look at that in a minute. But as we run through, you can see at the moment very little Cape around. Um, for this evening, potentially a little bit popping up, but nothing really too much. The initial weather front does move through around um, overnight tonight. Um, we've got initial front moving through, and then we've got another ripple moving through tomorrow afternoon with some very heavy rain, potentially, through sort of the Midlands into northern England, southern Scotland for up to tomorrow afternoon. Elsewhere, still some rain around, but that's the main focus for the heaviest stuff. And behind that, you can see Cape picks up by around 4 or 5 p.m. in southwestern areas, parts of Ireland, northern Ireland, into the Midlands and northern England. And this is really where the ye uh, yellow warning is for thunderstorms. And you can see quite a significant patch of Cape around in the Midlands. Now, it won't exactly play out like this. There will be some variation in real-time energy within the atmosphere, but these are the areas we've got to keep an eye on. If you are in these areas in the Midlands tomorrow afternoon into the evening, there could be some big storms around. If the electricity doesn't really come off in the storms, there still will be some very heavy showers around. So whether or not we see significant light negativity, it still does look like there's definitely going to be some very, very heavy showers around behind the initial weather front. Beyond that, you can see it does diminish through Sunday, very little cape around through Sunday, so not expecting too many thunderstorms through, throughout Sunday or even into Monday as things look like they're going to be a lot, turning a lot drier as high pressure does come back in. So if we do have a look at the precipitation, we can see right now we have that weather front heading across parts of uh, Ireland at the moment, not really bringing anything too significant, just some heavy rain at the moment. You can see it progresses eastwards. So... By later this evening into tonight, we do see those weather fronts arriving in parts of Wales, southwestern areas, starting clear Ireland, Northern Ireland uh, by now, and starting to move into western Scotland. For our early hours of tomorrow morning, you can see this ripple within the weather front heading in through southern Wales and southwestern areas, really enhancing the rain throughout tomorrow afternoon in central areas, the Midlands, and you can see by like 4 or 5 p.m. behind the initial front, which is now clearing, we're seeing these big, heavy showers develop along that ripple with the potential for some significant thunderstorms where we've seen that enhanced cape through the Midlands into northern England. Elsewhere, still a lot of showers around, even pretty much anywhere can catch a shower as this low pressure does move through. Um, but beyond that, things will turn drier slowly, with the low pressure still lingering further eastward, still a few showers and maybe more some more persistent rain in East Anglia, and again a few showers potentially through Sunday afternoon. But then looking through until Monday, things are going to be looking a lot drier as the high pressure takes control. If we do go through the icon run, see what that is showing. You can see at the moment the heavier rain moving in through this afternoon. You see that ripple heading up from the south west, and you can see those heavier pulses potentially developing throughout tomorrow afternoon. Those sort of greener colours potentially through the Midlands into East Anglia, even potentially down into London and through the northwest. Pretty much could be a line or big area of storms moving through there, potentially um, bringing um, some very very heavy rain um, into a few areas. Beyond that, though, looking very dry as the fine and dry weather does take over. I must emphasize though with these storms it is looking like it's mainly going to be rainfall that's going to be the issues. Some potentially flash flooding. Now of course there could be some electric uh, activity out there with some lightning but at this stage I'd definitely say the rainfall is the biggest worry. If we do have a look at the UK matter for run, we'll have a look at precipitation and we'll look at the temperatures for the next five days. You can see at the moment disorganized weather fronts moving through with some heavier pulses here or there. And then for tomorrow morning into the afternoon, we see heavier pulses arrive through South Wales, southwestern areas, by around early to mid morning, spreading eastward throughout. In heading into lunchtime, you can see this big mass of rain focus over northwestern areas, parts of southern Scotland, and into the Midlands. 
behind that, you can see these showers and thunderstorms breaking out around 4 or 5 p.m., mainly again in the, in the Midlands, into parts of Wales, potentially south and southwestern parts, and then even into Ireland, Northern Ireland as well, as that weather front does progress eastwards. Beyond that, again, still a few showers around, but through Sunday, that low pressure eventually does um, sort of fill in and lose its intensity, but again, still could be some showers around through Sunday. For Monday, Tuesday is looking much drier, pretty widely. A few showers around, potentially, but they'll be very isolated and local. So if we do have a look at the Met Office temperatures, if we do go through, um, you can see this afternoon we've seen around 20, 21 degrees. It's been quite cloudy around as we've got the approaching low pressure, but nothing, um, the temperature's not too spectacular, not too cool either. Beyond that, as we head into Saturday afternoon, you can see temperatures are a little bit down. Um, if the weather front had been a bit more delayed that, was, that, that we were thinking that it could have been a few days ago, we could have seen 25, 26 degrees. We were seeing that in the models a few days ago. But because the weather front has accelerated in its progress just by a couple hours, it means the peak of daytime temperatures around 3, 4 p.m. is now going to be swamped by rain. Whereas a few days ago, we were still going to have a bit of sunshine around in the east and we could have seen some higher temperatures. But it's going to be a bit cooler, around 20, 21 degrees maybe, where we do see some sunshine, especially further west, um, where apart from those thunderstorms moving in, things will be a little bit brighter and we could see some higher temperatures. As we head through to Sunday, you can see temperatures widely picking up to around mid to high teens, if not low 20s, um, as... The, uh, the rain and the showers do clear and we see a lot more sunshine around and by Monday temperatures once again getting into the low 20s widely um, not really anywhere is seeing anything particularly cool again there could be some sea breezes around but generally everywhere is around 20 degrees maybe a couple degrees above or a couple degrees below and it's Tuesday again another widespread warm day maybe 23 24 degrees feeling very pleasant out there um, with a lot, a lot of sunshine around um, for many areas so looking pretty decent apart from sort of the next maybe 40 hours where we could see some heavy rain and the thunderstorms around if we do now look, have a look at the latest weather warnings now we've got weather warnings out for tomorrow we've got a yellow thunderstorm warning in northern ireland and through central england from the southwest spreading up through eastern parts of wales through the midlands into northwest england and northeast england if we do have a look at the specifications you can see from 12 until 10 p.m tomorrow Many places will miss the worst, but heavy showers and thunderstorms may cause some travel disruption and perhaps flooding. So flooding, the main risk, and you can see at the moment, is very likely and low end of impact uh, for a yellow warning. So as you saw by those cape charts, there is some cape around, but nothing too massive, especially for the summer. So it does mean there's going to be a lot of widespread showers, but their intensity um, may be really variable, depending on exact atmospheric conditions at the time. But generally, it's still quite likely to be some heavy, heavy rain around, even if those showers don't quite develop into thunderstorms. So you can see, following the rain overnight and during the morning, heavier showers and thunderstorms are likely to break out by late morning. These are coming more widespread in the afternoon, with torrential downpours possible in a few places, bringing around 20 millimetres of rain in less than an hour, and 30 to 40 millimetres in a couple of hours. Lightning and hail may provide uh, or prove additional hazards in some locations so we'll have to keep an eye on that um but it does look like of course rainfall is the main risk um so do keep an eye out for that tomorrow if you have got any plans um as it's not looking particularly great for many areas of england wales uh, england wales and parts of northern ireland if we now go through the gfs and the weather models we'll briefly go through these um i don't think too much has changed yesterday um, in terms of the sort of seven day forecast, but longer than that, there is a lot of uncertainty. So you can see, can see by Monday, big area of high pressure pushing in. Now, the one thing we've got to watch is this easterly undercut, um, especially for the eastern half from around East Anglia down into the southeast. There's the potential to be dragging in more cloud, maybe a few showers um, here or there, and potentially some cooler conditions. But it really does depend on the strength of those winds moving in. Now, if we do subtly change the orientation of this high pressure, it can, could turn it even a bit warmer in the southeast. But at the moment, looking at the latest models, it does pull in some cooler air in from the east. So potentially the warmest temperatures could be further northwards, uh, further westwards um, throughout the middle of next week. Beyond that, the high pressure does stick around. It does in fact push some warmer air in as it sort of topples away. But as we strengthen, we just stay under high pressure. 
As we head towards day 10, though, we do see something interesting happening. A bit of a cut-off low developing down in um, sort of the uh, off the coast of Portugal. And what this does is it shunts up some hotter air from the south, potentially into the UK. And you can be can see by the 1st of September, we've got the 15 degree isotherm through widely, if not getting a little bit warmer. This would be a heat wave for September, with temperatures getting into the mid-20s, maybe even warmer than that. We do see it only lasts very briefly before low pressure does move back in, potentially with more thunderstorms, and by 384 hours, the temperatures are around 10 degrees cooler, 850 HPA. But interestingly, the GFS is still holding on to potential of this hot plume coming in from the south. It keeps on delaying it. It's been delaying it for about the last 7 or 10 days but still is showing it in the longer term. So there is still the possibility we do see a summer's last hurrah with some hotter temperatures, potentially for the last days of August into the first days of September. If we have a look at the GM, see how that does compare, you can see the low pressure pushing through over the next 48 hours, and then we see the high pressure take control. Again, a bit of an easterly flow, um, especially for the further southwards and eastwards. And if we do have a look, you can see that easterly flow moving in off the uh, near continent and you know, from the north and you can see some cool upper air temperatures maybe two or three degrees cooler in the south so that's why we could be seeing the warmest temperatures potentially towards northern ireland scotland northern england and just generally western areas beyond that we do see that low pressure in from scandinavia does take more control uh, as the high pressure wanes away but high pressure does take back control and by day 10 we are firmly under high pressure once again not anything Massively hot with the general airflow coming in from the north or northeast, but again, warm and dry. Um, and it's probably uh, one thing most people can agree it is fairly pleasant for all. Not massively hot, but not cold either. Um, and with dry weather, so you can get out and do stuff. If we do finally have a look at the Eastern DF, see how that does compare to the other models. You can see high pressure takes control by the start of this week. Then we do see that easily wind coming in. Pretty brisk there in the far southeast. Potentially, again, bringing some showers, cloud, and maybe some cooler temperatures. But it should generally be still warm in the sun. Oh, well, we do see the sun come out. And we do see some, and we do see some temperatures rising. Um, but it could be locally a little bit. Uh, cooler and more wetter down in that southeast corner. As we head towards A10, you can see generally high pressure still in control, but right towards 240 hours, do you see something similar to the GFS? GFS had it a couple days later, but the Eastern WF has this low pressure pushing up from the south. Now, of course, it could introduce some very heavy rain, some potentially thunderstorms, but also some hotter air coming in from the southeast. We've seen this a lot on the weather models over the last week or so. None have really come to fruition, but it's still, again, showing it towards a 7 to 10 day time frame. So we'll just have to really keep an eye on it. It would bring up a pulse of very hot air, potentially getting temperatures into the high 20s, if not maybe even 30 degrees, for a day or two before breaking it down with big heavy rain and thunderstorms. Again, long-term outlook, very uncertain. Certain, but it's just something to really keep an eye on but for the short term next seven days after this weekend it is looking very dry and warm we can see that is well reflected on the gfs ensembles you can see for the next sort of week or so temperatures are going to be around average um and you can see the big rainfall spike tomorrow um, and into sunday um as we see that very heavy rain spread through saturday afternoon and those thunderstorms taking off potential for maybe five to ten millimeters from the frontal rain and again locally areas could see a lot more if they do catch those showers and thunderstorms afterwards you can see temperatures are generally around average but as we're talking sort of the 26th 27th last few days of august we get a massive uh, divergence in the upper air temperatures some go very warm like the gfs operational others go much cooler getting around to zero or two degrees at around 850 hpa especially in the longer term and you can see though it is generally quite dry so high pressure more in control as we head to the first days of september you can see a lot more uncertainty on the precipitation some going a lot more wetter others remaining more dry um, and potentially warm as well but a lot of uncertainty in these upper air temperatures can't really see say anything from around seven days but it's still looking encouraging for being dry all the way to the last few days of August. So it could be a very pleasant last week of August. Nothing amazing temperature-wise, temperatures into the low 20s, but very dry, which I think a lot of people will enjoy. If you have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see 
um, that over the next few weeks or two weeks, you can see generally is going to be above average uh, pressure. I'd say sort of median pressures around 1,015 millibars, give or take one or two uh, millibars. So you can see generally we are above that line for the foreseeable future. So high pressure is in control, perhaps waning towards the end of the run. But again, we'll have to just keep an eye on it. A lot of uncertainty around at this time. So do make sure you keep out, uh, keep your eye out for the heavy rain and thunderstorms tomorrow. Um, it could be quite severe in a few places, so do keep an eye out for that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.